So we will be commencing this virtual event. Il est temps maintenant. Nous allons commencer cet cet événement virtuel. But before we commence, mais avant de commencer, officially, uh, avant I would de commencer want officiellement, to, I would want to give some housekeeping information. Je voudrais donner quelques informations générales. Uh, we, uh, there is a provision for translation or interpretation. Il y aura la traduction, l'interprétation. In two languages, English and French. En deux langues, le français et l'anglais. And at the bottom of your screen, you would et see an icon. Et au bas de votre icon. écran, vous trouverez une icône où on écrit. You would see interpretation at the one of the icons. So you select. Des icônes. Sélectionnez yes. cette icône. Yes, you select whether English or French, the language that is more comfortable and convenient Alors, for you. Alors sélectionnez français ou anglais selon la langue de votre préférence. The second information is that. La deuxième would, information. I would crave your indulgence to utilize the chat. Je vous sollicite votre indulgence. The window for chat. Pour que vous puissiez utiliser la fenêtre de uh, de, de dialogue. Where you will. Uh, introduce yourself properly by writing que vous allez your vous name, correctement. Mettez-y votre nom, votre organisation. And also, we would use the chat window. Mais aussi, nous allons utiliser cette fenêtre de dialogue for questions and comments pour les questions et les commentaires ou des remarques. Your Eminences, Your Excellencies, Vos Eminences, Your Lordships, Excellence, Sisters and Brothers, we are delighted at AACC to have you join at this virtual launch. Your presence here is critical to us and we appreciate it. La, la, la. Without waste of time, your eminences, Sans your excellences, temps, sisters and brothers, excellence, frères et sœurs, I would invite J'invite Venerable Kofi de Graaf Johnson. He is the General Secretary of the Council, le général du Conseil of Anglican Provinces in Africa. De la, de province anglicane en Afrique, with its headquarters in Nairobi, Kenya. Avec, to give us the opening prayer. Venerable Johnson. Thank you, uh, Reverend Dr. Lesmori. Merci beaucoup, Reverend Dr. Lesmori. For the opportunity to share a word of prayer. Pour l'occasion de partager le, la prière, le mot de prière. As we collaborate with the AACC. En ce moment, nous collaborons avec la CETA. To launch the policy on debt and corruption in Africa. Pour lancer cette note de politique sur la corruption en Afrique. Let us pray. Prions. Creator God, Dieu notre créateur, you created the world and saw that all you have created is good. Pour, et tout ce que tu as créé était bon. You gave man to be in charge. Tu as, tu as donné la responsabilité à l'homme. And be responsible to take care of your creation. Pour prendre soin de ta création. But man's greed has had the best part of him. Mais la cupidité de l'homme l'a dépassé. And so we have corrupted your world. Et c'est pourquoi nous avons corrompu ton monde. We have undermined your authority. Nous avons sous-estimé ton autorité. And we have not cared for each other. Et nous n'avons pas pris soin les uns des autres. We have sought after our own interest. Nous avons cherché nos propres intérêts. And we have stolen from the needs from those who are needy. Et nous avons euh, volé euh, des gens qui sont dans les besoins. We come before your presence this afternoon. Nous venons de votre présence cet après-midi. And confess our sins before you. Et nous confessons nos péchés devant toi. 
we ask for your forgiveness. Nous demandons ton pardon. As we ask for your forgiveness, Lord, et quand nous demandons ton pardon, Seigneur, we pray that as we launch this policy, nous prions que à ce moment où nous lançons cette note de politique, you will give your church the grace que tu puisses donner à ton église la grâce. You will give us the courage que tu nous donnes le courage and you will give us the insight que tu nous donnes l'inspiration to be able to speak to unjust structures pour que nous soyons capables de dénoncer les structures injustes and to be able to demand accountability que nous soyons capables de demander la redevabilité d'exiger la redevabilité remind your church lord rappelle à ton église seigneur that you are the lord of creation que tu es le seigneur de la création you love justice tu aimes la justice and you desire that your church and the people et tu désires que ton église et son, et son peuple puissent travailler vers la justice as we come before you this afternoon en ce moment où nous venons devant toi cet après-midi we ask you to send us the help of your holy spirit nous te demandons l'aide du saint esprit that whatever we do this afternoon in this lunch pour que tout ce que nous allons faire cet après-midi dans le moment de ce lancement will honor you puisse t'honorer and bring consciousness to your church et éveiller la conscience de ton église that we are people that you have called apart nous qui sommes des gens que tu nous as mis à part to work towards the establishment of your kingdom here on earth pour travailler pour l'établissement de ton royaume sur terre we are unable except you give us grace nous sommes incapables sauf si nous avons ta grâce and so we thank you that you hear us. Remercions donc parce que tu nous écoutes. And you answer our prayer. Et tu réponds à nos prières. Because you have asked us in the name of parce your son Jesus Christ, our Lord. Nous avons demandé au nom de Jésus Christ, notre Seigneur. Amen. <coughs> Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Venerable Merci beaucoup, Johnson, Venerable for Johnson. such a powerful prayer that leads pour cette us prière puissante into the other parts of the qui event. Qui nous introduit dans les autres parties de cet événement. There are many eminent persons that have joined us in this virtual event. Qui nous ont rejoint dans cet événement virtuel top-notch diplomats from their respective countries. Nous avons des diplomates de leur pays respectif. I want to respectfully recognize the presence of Je the ambassador of Malawi. la présence de l'ambassadeur du Malawi. We are delighted because she is a great nous woman. Nous sommes très contents parce que c'est une femme merveilleuse. There are many eminences that have joined us. Il y a beaucoup d'autres eh, personnalités qui nous ont rejoints. In the course of this event, we will introduce them événement, nous allons les présenter. as they bring goodwill messages to us in this event. Uh, without waste of time, I would now invite the Deputy General Secretary of AACC, All Africa Conference of Churches, in the person of Elder Dr. Bright Maudo, who would bring a welcome remarks on behalf of the institution. We are aware that the General Secretary is here with us, who would be speaking shortly, uh, but has assigned the Deputy General Secretary to bring a welcome remarks at this time. Uh, Dr. Maudo. Thank you, moderator. The General Secretary of the All Africa Conference of Churches, Reverend Dr. Fidon Mombeki, 
Your Excellencies, Ambassadors, Partners of the All Africa Conference of Churches from all over the world, distinguished church for participants in this launch, my colleagues at the All Africa Conference of Churches, all other protocols observed. It is my singular honor and pleasure to welcome you to this launch. The topic we are dealing with is a topic that is so dear to our General Secretary, Dr. Mombeki. And he felt that no one can best talk about it than the All Africa Conference of Churches. And we thank you for finding time to participate in this launch. Thomas Jefferson, the American statesman, diplomat, and the third president of the United States, said, and I quote, reading from the Harvard Business Review of February 2019, he said, to preserve our freedom and independence, we must not let our rules load us with perpetual debt. We must make a choice between economy and liberty, between profusion and servitude to debt. Unquote. Distinguished participants, unsustainable debt is the slavery of any free man or woman. As for corruption, the less we talk about it, the better. It is a crime without conscience. It's a cancer that steals from the poor. Corruption makes the poor to lose confidence in democracy and governance. And in a world where the rich gets richer, where everyone is for himself and God for us all, there is no better organization to talk about the issue of debt, public debt and corruption than the All Africa Conference of Churches. Therefore, welcome, welcome once again on behalf of the leadership of the All Africa Conference of Churches in this noble and divine endeavor this afternoon. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, the Deputy General Secretary. I would have been surprised if you had ended your address without some very remarkable, fascinating quotes. And thank, thank you, you for those quotes, even though it has been there for many years, but it is still timely and relevant for us today. Thank you very much for welcoming us. And this is to say that all of us that are participating in this virtual uh, launch, we are now at home because we have been officially uh, welcomed. Now, may I now invite the chief convener and the host. Uh, but before then, let me request that please, if you are not speaking, kindly mute your microphones. May I request that we all mute our microphones so that we avoid interferences from our phones and other movements around us. May I request, humbly request, that we... Mute himself. 
can't hear what you're saying. Yeah? Dr. Lesmore, we can't hear you. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, thank you. Can you hear me now? Thank you, thank you, thank you, DGS, for the wonderful welcome that you have given us. And uh, now, may I invite the convener and the chief host, the general secretary of the All Africa Conference of Churches, who would give us an address, a message from the general secretary. Please, may I request that we mute our microphones to avoid any form of interferences, whether by our mics, uh, by our phones, or other things that are moving around us. Please, let's mute our microphones. The General Secretary, you are most welcome. I'm going to have to this launch. Thank you. Your Excellences, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to apologize for starting without now updating protocol addresses due to the variety of the participants here today. However, I like to know the presence of the leadership of the African Union, advisors of all corruption. Represented here by Mrs. Charity Chimunya, Executive Secretary, the African Union Economic Social and Financial Council, ESOSOC, leadership represented here by Mr. Dennis Gordon, Active Design Writing Officer, and Mr. William Carey, Carrier Head of Secretariat. Also, to mention the Malawi High Commission in Nairobi, represented here by Her Excellency. Mrs. Akrena Musa, the High Commissioner, and Ms. Mr. Makopa Kaunda, the Councillor and Head of Chancery. Also, I would like to mention Dr. Barbara King, Second Secretary of Political, uh, for His Excellency Ambassador, Ambassador Peter Doyle, Ambassador of Australia to Ethiopia, uh, African Union, CAR, and Djibouti. Also, our partners across the globe, including World Council of Churches, led by Professor Isabel Apawapiri, Deputy General Secretary, and our leaders from the partner organizations which really work with us, particularly the Bread for the World, as well as um, EMW and other partners, our member churches and associate members, particularly from our governance bodies, from our presidium, from some members of the board of trustees, some bishops and others. I'm deeply grateful for the honor you have given to the All Africa Conference of Churches by accepting to participate virtually in this short launching event. We know you are all very busy. Therefore, we do not take your presence for granted. So thank you very much and welcome again. 20 years ago, I was a young activist participating in several events of protests against unsustainable debt for poor countries, including at the highlight in Cologne, Germany, where we presented millions of signatures from around the world to the G7 leaders in 1999 to demand drop the debt. Churches were the main drivers of that famous Jubilee 2000 campaign which resulted in, in more than US dollars, 100 billion of debts owed by 35 poorest countries canceled. The symbol we used was a chain. At that time, this, to symbolize the dropping or breaking the cycle of debt, it was a broken chain link. At that time, we had hoped and wishes, we had hopes and wishes that poor countries, most of whom were from Africa, will never go back to such enslavement of debt. But alas, here we are today. AICC is very concerned and worried about the rising unsustainable indebtedness of many countries in Africa. From what we hear and want to follow up, it is possible that most, if not all, of the countries 
whose debts were cancelled then in 2000 have gone back to even higher debts than it was. And while at that time the target of our campaign was almost clear, that was OECD countries and their multilateral financial institutions, today the situation is more complex with more players who were not there before, most notably China. This complexity will make the conversations even more convoluted. During that Jubilee 2000 campaign, the OECD countries always counteracted our efforts and our demands by pointing at rampant corruption in Africa, which is a major part of the problem. We must admit our campaign then did not pay sufficient attention to the scourge of corruption, even though it was spoken about. But now, AACC is convinced that corruption within Africa is as much a problem as debt, and definitely causes or worsens the burden of debt in our countries. Therefore, it is necessary to address both together as serious problems interlinked as it were. Since both lead to catastrophic problems to innocent masses, the church cannot stay on the sidelines while God's people continue to suffer worsening deprivation because of the actions of those bestowed with the responsibility of leadership. The time has come once again for us to speak out and to act. We see a very worrying lack of awareness in the population about the seriousness of the problem of unsustainable debt. People are happy to see new developments, especially the mega projects that have now become a signature of the continent as every country targets, somehow I don't know why, to reach middle income status by 2025. I don't know what is magic about 2025. There is a lot of secrecy around these mega, mega projects, particularly on contracts, procurement, financing, and awarding of tenders, and the information is not quite easily or uh, readily available or accessible. But it's our children whose future is being mortgaged and who will be unable to undertake meaningful development when their time comes because of the burden we are putting on them before they are even born. In short and medium terms, we are increasingly fearing the sovereignty of some countries may be at risk because of that. We see that as a vehicle for a new scramble for Africa, where some countries are even accepting racist and dehumanizing behavior of some lender countries because they have already been held hostage, giving away their vital resources, including land and minerals, for senseless exploitation at the expense of their own citizens some of whom are even driven out of their lands. In this, is this a new face of slavery and dehumanization of the Africans in their own continent? The challenge of debt is being worsened by corruption. Nothing has exemplified this link more than the controversies in handling of the huge funds countries have borrowed or received for COVID 19 pandemic. While we all agree that corrupt, the corrupt are in all countries, we are appalled by the level of corruption and impunity in many African countries. AACC, while acknowledging the very negative role that has been played by international contractors and financiers in corrupting officials in Africa, their responsibility rests with our own people and our own governments. It is actually escapism to really blame foreigners when our own systems and our own people are corrupt. If we do not blame ourselves as countries, we are admitting being fools. By allowing this to happen to us, then and then cry over and over again. We admit that good governance is still a big problem, a big challenge in many African countries and the problem of debt and corruption is but only one manifestation. It is very bad and we agonize that the more Ibrahim Leadership Award for Africa presidents has had no winners for several years now. 
In cases where there are institutions established at the continental level, notably by the African Union, churches are concerned that these still lag behind in consistently fulfilling their mandates, especially member states' commitment to their reporting obligations. An example here, among others, could be the African Peer Review Mechanism, which, lamentably, we do not see it function as it was intended. However, we do not give up, because we are very much encouraged by some countries that are successfully taking positive steps against corruption, and it is seemingly reflecting in strides they are making in development. This further demonstrates that Africa can and should get rid of corruption by itself. Now, because of the silence about these two matters, corruption and, and death, we would like to encourage churches to raise awareness of the people as responsible citizens in their own countries and to start again robust conversations on these matters. The churches in Africa do play a very central role in most countries. As they, they are present at all levels of society and they still command a higher level of trust than many other institutions in society. It is an asset that they need to use in public space. It is on this basis, therefore, we are launching this policy brief. We wanted to restart and re-energize the already existing conversations on the matters of debt and corruption. We want to raise the awareness of church leaders to be equipped with adequate knowledge of the situations in their own countries and galvanize their members at all levels to interrogate the context they are in. We want churches to engage in activities that will enlighten and empower their congregations to speak out and to get governments to move decisively before these problems overwhelm them. We want to see the people in different African countries discussing and paying attention to the emerging debt crisis to let people know and keep demanding their governments to fight corruption, even where corruption has lamentably become tolerated or even expected as a given, saying this is how government works. It should not be so. We want to see churches condemn these vices, making them known and using their spiritual resources to help both perpetrators and victims of corruption. That is why AACC is launching the policy brief on debt and corruption. The policy brief is a result of this wide, of wide consultations among various prayers and churches in the continent. It defines the AACC's stand on these challenges and provides some suggestions practically for churches to start active engagement starting from their local levels to national levels. Ultimately, AACC hopes to create a powerful coalition across Africa that is enlightened and pushing African governments to deal with these issues. I would like to reiterate very clearly AACC's unequivocal support and promotion of Agenda 2063 and see it as a viable blueprint or roadmap towards the Africa we want. A peaceful, integrated, and prosperous Africa. But this will not be will, will be possible only if we can get rid of corruption and we do not enslave our future through irresponsible and sustainable borrowing and mortgaging of our resources to new potential enslavers. As I come to the end of my message, I would like to say that it, in, in the vein of seeking and building connections that we are privileged to have the presence of the AU institutions with us today, some member states of the AU, some partners, and potential ones, including AACC member churches, into this cycle to discern together how we can tackle unsustainable debt and corruption on the continent. We are excited about the possibilities of journeying together in this area of work in service to humanity. Before I close, I would like to mention that we want to run a program in a few countries in Africa, where we will accompany churches which are ready to research 
which are ready through research, data provision, capacity building, publicity, and campaigns as they, those churches engage on these issues in their countries. And we will continue through our liaison office at the African Union to keep the AU organs informed and engaged about these matters and continue to call for their visible and effective intervention according or in line with the AU Charter. Our desire is to really enable AACC to assist these countries with access to information, even when that information is difficult to get in that particular country. It provides a forum for conversation when sometimes it may not be feasible inside the country. Therefore, for this task, we very cordially and sincerely invite you to cooperate with us in to realize this program. And with these few remarks, I would like to declare that our ABCC policy brief on debt and corruption to be officially launched. Thank you very much. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Please, can you give a round of applause to the General Secretary? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, thank you most sincerely, uh, Dr. Fidon Mombeki, for such an elaborate, thought-provoking address that you have just delivered. Uh, it's very pertinent, and for us to lift up the twin evils of uh, corruption and unsustainable debts. And once you are indebted, you have become a slave. This was very clear in your address, and we are deeply grateful. And uh, also bring, bringing forward the fact that we as a church, as an ecumenical movement, we will remain defiant in speaking against all forms of corruption that has mortgaged the future of even the, those who are yet to be born. So we are grateful uh, for this, uh, very thought-provoking address that you have given. Uh, going, may, I, may, I, may I still mention, for those who are comfortable with French, please go to the icon there and select. You will see an icon, interpretation, which is meant for translation. Select from there the language that you are more comfortable with. May I also crave your indulgence that please, if you are not speaking, kindly mute your microphone. When it is your turn to speak, then you unmute your microphones. Thank you. May I now, going by our program, uh, invite my colleague, uh, the director for our liaison office or liaison services with the African Union in Addis Ababa, Mr. Gordon Simango, who is going to take us through in the next five to 10 minutes and give us an overview of the processes that led to producing this policy brief that we are engaging with today. Uh, Mr. Simango, your time is up now. Thank you very much, uh, Reverend. Uh, your Excellencies, Ambassadors, and they are representatives, representatives from the AU organs who are here today, my Lord Bishop's partners, AACC leadership, and um, our constituency members. It is my privilege to be speaking to you today. Um, unsustainable public debt and corruption have always been a concern of the AACC and its members for a long time, like we heard from the AACC General Secretary Reverend Dr. Fidon Mombeki. I would not take much time trying to walk you through the process that we went through because the General Secretary has captured that very, very well. Instead, I will go straight into the policy brief and speak to the recommendations which we are putting forward uh, in the policy brief. If you can see uh, what I'm lifting up to you now is actually the front page of the policy brief. And they would like to draw your attention what we actually put here on the front page. So we actually start by the faith and moral imperative, which we draw from Proverbs 29 verse two, where we say, when the righteous increase, the people rejoice. But when the wicked rule, the people groan. This is our faith and moral imperative. And now from His Excellency, Paul Kagame, President of the Republic of Rwanda, 
he actually says that corruption is a universal weakness, not an apt one. And it's not part of our destiny as a continent. Leaders should not continue focusing on petty corruption while turning a blind eye to the more consequential forms that people only whisper about. Where corruption has become the norm, a way of life, it is because leaders have made it that way. So the nexus between these two imperatives, the faith imperative and the imperative from His Excellency President Paul Kagame, we underline is leadership. So Proverbs said, when the wicked rule, the people groan. His Excellency says, when corruption has become the norm, when it, it has become the way of life, it is because leaders have made it that way. The imperative of leadership is very, very important and very, very, very key to us fighting corruption. Whether it is leading from the front or leading from behind, or it is the concept of 360 degrees leadership where you actually lead from where, whatever part of the circle you are, it is very, very important to understand that leadership is key. Transformational leadership is key, and this is leadership with integrity, leadership that has citizens at heart, leadership that takes responsibility, leadership that creates spaces for citizens to engage, above all, a God-fearing leadership that shuns and closes in on vices of corruption. We need to begin to debug, we need to begin to repel, we need to cleanse ourselves Corruption is a deficiency of the moral imperative. I move on to the second page. If you have received the copy, which we hope most of you have, we have the preamble of the policy brief, which looks at two definitions here. One that embraces our faith and moral imperative, and one that refers us to the treaty text of the African Union Convention on Preventing and Combating Corruption a very, very important AU document for member states, but also for us as churches. I would like to emphasize here what we see in the definitions, the fact that corruption affects society and is one of the principal causes of human suffering and deprivation. Corruption leads to misdirection of development, it leads to violation of human rights, it increases indebtedness and widening the gap in affluence and weakening social cohesion among, amongst others. The list can go on and on. Why is the church concerned? Our general secretary has well, well captured that and has been exhaustive on it. On the African situation, a number of African countries are spending in excess of 45% of domestic tax revenue on interest payment, particularly countries that are in debt distress category and those who are at high risk of debt distress. Any country that is corrupt is also inefficient at collecting taxes, resulting in dwarfed domestic revenue. Corruption is also explained through inefficient public investment processes, like our General Secretary has uh, mentioned, where we have high investment costs with limited values sometimes for money, resulting in higher borrowings and less to show. Uh, for cash flow generation capacities for African economies. The effects of corruption, unsustainable debt levels and corruption hampers the ability of countries to fulfill their obligations for economic, social and cultural rights. Among these are rights to adequate food, rights to adequate housing, to education, to health, to social security, to water and sanitation, and to providing decent employment. COVID-19 has caught us unawares. It has exposed weaknesses in government structures, the propensity to greedness, here referring to the private sector, the governments, the individuals. I think we all have read of headlines of how supply chains have been caught in the need to grease the hands of those awarding tenders. ETC, ETC, ETC. The stories are very, very familiar uh, to us. In terms of the policy recommendations that we are making as AACC, I will just highlight a few here. 
The first part looks at policy recommendations that we are making to duty bearers or to decision makings. So one of them is the need for Africa to have strong institutions and institutional arrangements. We recommend the need to strengthen institutions on the continent to curb corruption, particularly foreign entities, and move away from the foreign-sponsored exception-based corruption measures, which fail to capture their role in fueling corruption to their advantage on the continent. Our GS has just spoken very, very articulately on the need to look at the role of multinational corporations on the continent. We have to, we, we have to monitor the work of multinational, multinational corporations on the continent who are coming under foreign direct investment investments. Citizens can feel the siphoning of resources and in certain cases, fueling of corruption. Oftentimes, like the GS mentioned, bilateral investment treaties, bits, contents are not public information. It's very, very difficult to get access to that information. African governments must collaborate. They must share information to improve regulatory supervision and improve economic governance overall on the continent to minimize corruption, but also to empower us as churches as well to accompany them in fighting corruption on the continent. The second recommendation that I am picking is the one on reforming the global financial architecture. He, holds the pipe, he who holds the pipe blows the tune. Well, at least we have attained political independence as Africa, much of our economic independence still needs to be fully attained. Africa must unite and push for greater reform of the global financial architecture. We also make a recommendation as AACC on inequality and poverty. We recommend an urgent attention by governments to gross inequality and endemic poverty amid this limited fiscal space. There is an urgent need to boost social spending, including spending on health, education, and social protection. We also make a recommendation on domestic resource mobilization and curbing illicit financial flows. Here we recommend increased domestic resource mobilization with more financial transparency and efficient utilization and accountability. Reforms are needed to fight tax evasion and tax avoidance and to combat illicit financial flows. We also make a recommendation on the need to engage us as churches to engage civil society, media, and protection of whistleblowers. We recommend for African governments to embrace and collaborate with civil society uh, organizations, with journalists who are working against corruption. Furthermore, we recommend for laws and a safe environment to protect investigative journalism, whistleblowers, and activists who are involved in fighting corruption. As much as we need to engage and we are making policy recommendations to duty bearers and decision makers, we are also making recommendations to us. Don't they say, I hope you can see me, if you are pointing a finger like that, you realize that you also have other fingers, maybe three of them or even more pointing at you. And for us as churches in this vein, we are calling for self-introspection. So we are making a recommendation to ourselves for pastoral and prophetic accompaniment of members of the church and for the church to design approaches and actions of self-introspection while remaining as a light of the world and salt of the earth through preaching, prayers, home cells, Bible studies that focus on corruption. For us to be authentic as churches, we also make quite a number of recommendations for us to be able to document to verify, to speak with authenticity, and also to speak out, to voice out our concerns and the information that we are seeing. And on the national debt crisis, we recommend that as churches, we increase our capacities for research, increase our capacities for enhancing linkages with government structures, and for us to demand openness and accountability and create awareness among ourselves. I thank you, moderator. Thank you. A round of applause for our colleague and friend, uh, Gordon uh, 
uh, Semango for taking us through within the shortest time uh, the, on the policy uh, brief. And uh, thank you very much for lifting up the dimension that we are not just only pointing accusing fingers to uh, public officials, but we are also looking at ourselves as a faith entity. Uh, so that we have to examine ourselves, do an x-ray of ourselves, then we will be confident, we will stand on possibly a higher uh, moral ground to, to challenge the various injustices, the corruption, and the unsustainable debts that our government, our public officials have this insatiable penchant uh, for debts. Of course, we are not saying debts uh, are not to be collected, but debts should be collected and be judiciously used. That is very critical because the world that we are in is a world of indebtedness, of collecting debts and credits. But how we manage such debts and credits will determine how sustainable those debts are. And especially when we deal with the evils of corruption. So thank you very much, uh, Simango, for taking us through the document and the various recommendations that have been made in the document. Now, without a waste of time, we would now go into goodwill messages. We have identified few from the eminent uh, personalities, and not only that, from institutions that we have also been working with, and many others that we have been working with. But we have selected few who will give a goodwill messages thereafter we will have an open space conversation on the entire process. Now to begin the goodwill messages, uh, I would invite uh, Karimi Kinoti, the head of Africa Division of the Christian Aid. Is Karimi with us? Yes, I'm here. I hope you okay. can see me and hear me. You have uh, your five yeah. minutes now. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. General Secretary, All Africa Conference of Churches, Your Excellencies, eminent personalities, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, um, colleagues, and fellow sojourners, um, good morning, good afternoon, and thank you very much, uh, the All Africa Conference of Churches for inviting us to share a few words as you launch your timely policy brief on public debt and corruption. I say timely because as the world begins to look at a COVID recovery plan, um, the true church of, and the true church of Jesus Christ revitalizes the spiritual mandate and authority given to it by our Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 16 uh, verses 18 to 19 that the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. It is appropriate for the church and the church in Africa to tackle the very gates that keep the African people in economic bondage. As many of you know, those who know me on the call, I'm a practical and an action-oriented person. And therefore, when I received your policy brief, I was primarily interested in your call to action. And I narrowed down on the recommendation around reforming the global financial architecture all your other recommendations are very important, and particularly what you have shared um, about the responsibility of our African governments to be accountable for the stewardship, to, for their stewardship of public resources. And similarly, for the citizens of Africa to hold their governments to account. However, at the heart of the vicious cycle of the international, at the heart is a vicious cycle of a global financial system 
with all its intricacies that impede Africa's progress, whether we are talking about the perpetual uh, corruption, the debt issues that have reached unsustainable levels, illicit financial flows, um, and the behavior of multinational corporations, etc. Africa cannot tackle the reform of this global financial system on its own. It is a global problem that requires a global solution. So it is my hope and the hope of uh, all of us at Christian Aid that AACC would draw on the global church to rally around a movement for reform of this global financial system. The call for a HIPIC 2.0 or the Jubilee uh, 2000 movement in 2020. Um, so uh, debt relief for the most indebted countries of uh, the world is inevitable. However, even as we do so, what is a sustainable way forward? Africa's creditors, all of them, need to be at the table. Multinational, uh, multilateral institutions, China, the private sector, bilateral uh, creditors as well. We need to have, as a continent, a substantive discussion, not on minimum gestures from the international community. We thank God that Africa has been spared the doomsday prophecies of deaths, dead bodies lying on our streets from COVID-19 cases. However, we know that the real challenge for this continent, for its government, for, for it, our governments and our people, are the social and economic effects of COVID that has set back Africa's development several decades. What is being made available for the continent's recovery is a pittance compared to the trillions of dollars elsewhere. And so our debt distress situation needs to be addressed as a matter of urgency. And as I've said earlier, yes, there, we, can, we can talk about debt relief with a moratorium, but what, how do we deal with this from a systematic issue? tackling it systemically and structurally. Christian Aid is more than willing to engage with the All Africa Conference of Churches on this issue, including making available to you um, some of the data um, and other work that we're doing on national debt in each country and the creditors. The issue of debt relief is a priority for us within our own policy and advocacy framework, which we call Building Back Better, the post-recovery Building Back Better with Justice. As I close, I'd like to congratulate you on the launch of your policy brief on public debt and corruption, and look forward to our ongoing collaboration on this important issue, both for the present and future generations of our beloved continent, Africa. God bless you and thank you. Thank you. Thank you most sincerely, Ms. Karimi, for the goodwill message that you have just delivered on behalf of the Christian aid. Uh, may I also recognize the presence of some media houses that are represented by the uh, uh, reporters who have joined us. So thank you very much for joining us and taking some bits to the public after this event. Uh, let me now invite uh, the representative of Global Ministries of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ and United Church of Christ in the US, Reverend Lamarco A. Cable, who is an executive for Africa Office for the Goodwill Message. Reverend Lamarco, please. 
Is Reverend Lamarco with us? Oh, I am still muted. I uh, <laughs> heeded your instructions in the beginning to mute myself. Okay, so thank you. <laughs> so thank you very much. Uh, hello, friends. Uh, it is still very early on this side of the United States. In fact, when I look outside my window, the sun has not risen and greeted uh, the citizens of my country and those on this side of the hemisphere. I greet each of you in the matchless name of our risen Lord and Savior. I'm sorry, someone needs to mute themselves. I Pre cannot. Precious, Precious, can you mute your mic? Precious, can you mute your mic? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, I greet you on behalf of Global Ministries Board of Directors, the Reverend Dr. Julia Brown Karimu, and the Reverend Dr. Karen Georgia Thompson, co executives of Global Ministries my colleagues in Indianapolis, Indiana, and Cleveland, Ohio, and our mission co-workers serving around the world. As has been shared, Global Ministries is the joint witness and mission of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ and the United Church of Christ. We are a North American church with constituencies in the United States and Canada. The Disciples of Christ and the United Church of Christ have worked closely in our overseas mission dating back to the 1960s, but formalized our relationship in 1996 to form what we know today as Global Ministries. The All African Conference of Churches and Global Ministries has enjoyed decades of partnership and friendship. We have joined efforts in accompanying communities across the continent to create a more just, sustainable society that honors all people's dignity. I want to commend and applaud the General Secretary and his staff at the AACC for gathering us for this virtual launch of the policy brief on debt and corruption. The COVID-19 pandemic has exposed weak infrastructures, inadequate medical mm -hmm. services, national debt, and corruption. And the global pandemic beckons us to take care of ourselves, spiritually and physically. But it also calls us to address the evil society. Mr. Lanu demand aussi to address the sin of corruption that compromises trust. De chercher des solutions à la corruption qui compromet les, les esprits. And denies God's people abundant life. In my travel across the continent, I repeatedly hear that corruption is one of Africa's Hi, most Andy, can you hear me now? challenges. Hello. Uh, yes, we are here. Uh, Hello. Umi, Hello. Umi, can you can you mute your mic, please? Please let us mute our mics, please. Thank you, uh, uh, Reverend Marco. Please go ahead. In my travel across the continent, I repeatedly hear that corruption is one of Africa's most significant challenges, and often people speak of corruption as if it is uniquely, characteristically African. <laughs> which my experience and engagement in the world has revealed that is not African at all, but human, present on all continents, in every nation, and just as strong and binding in places outside of Africa. I hope together, we can name this sin in us and among us. Yes, even in the church, and larger society. Very high, Andy. This happened, there's a Zoom meeting international. <laughs> so I was trying to, I didn't want to close it down. So sorry. Uh, Bumi, Bumi, you are interfering some, uh, a bit. Yeah. OK, Reverend okay. Marco, please. Still, we should not turn a blind eye to the outside forces that influences 
that influences and benefits from a corrupt and unstable African nations and compromising African leaders. This too should be named because if we are going to name sin, we cannot offer passes to some while ignoring others. Together, we can address this evil. Indeed, drive it out. And together, we can create an Africa that is stronger, free from the shackles of debt and corruption, which will lead to a peaceful and more stable world. Thank you for inviting my participation in this launch and giving me this opportunity to share greetings. May God bless our time together and the spirit inspires our creativity and collaboration. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you most sincerely, uh, Reverend Lamarco, for such a brief goodwill message that indeed embodies different facets of how we view corruption and how we need to deal with this uh, global monster that is eating death uh, in our humanity. Thank you very much. May I now invite um, MK Federike Timan Middleton, the political advisor at Bread for the World, um, is a program officer in the unit for continental projects at Bread for the World in Germany. Uh, Imke, please, you are most welcome. Thank you, Dr. Les More. Dear everyone, dear colleagues of the All Africa Conference of Churches, dear ambassadors, dear representatives from the African Union, dear participants from all over the world, good afternoon to all of you. I'm very much honored to be part of this very important virtual launch of the AACC policy brief on public debt and corruption. The All Africa Conference of Churches chose a very delicate but extremely important subject to focus its work on and to bring it to a broader public. We at Brett for the World are very pleased that the AACC started to raise awareness about public debt and corruption and to elaborate policy recommendations together with a lot of people from across the country and to help everyone to get a better understanding of the linkage between corruption and destabilization. The time, not only because of COVID-19, is crucial. We face a lot of uncertainties. Long-lasting relationships are in limbo. New leaders speak out. The youth in Africa and Europe start to have their own vision of the future. Public debt and corruption are words that cross all our lives. They have a meaning to all our realities. Corruption has many faces. Therefore, we absolutely support the AACC in its approach to discuss the aspects that lay behind these words. Like President Kagame already stated a couple of times, corruption is not an African problem. It's a universal obstacle to development. The partnership between the AU and the EU is currently at a very strategic interface. The signing of the Post Cotonou Agreement, a binding document between the African, Caribbean and Pacific states and the EU is meant to happen at the end of this year. And the EU proposed a new document towards a comprehensive strategy with Africa, a strategy that was meant to come to life in October this year during the next AU EU summit. Due to re-increasing numbers of Corona cases in Europe, the summit was recently postponed to a later moment next year, probably. Therefore, we have gained some time to mobilize civil society in Africa, but as well in Europe, to play a more active role in shaping this new partnership and to add subjects like public debt and corruption to this comprehensive strategy, subjects that are important to all of us and that help to design a future that allows a life of prosperity, participation, and equality to all of us. We believe in a strong partnership of both continents that is based on an equal footing, and now is the time to call for that. Thank you very much. 
Wow, thank you very much, uh, MK, for those um, quite encouraging, inspiring words that you have brought to our knowledge. Thank you very much for those words. Uh, may I now invite the Deputy General Secretary, Public Witness and Diaconia of the World Council of Churches, Elder Professor Isabel Apao Piri to bring a goodwill message. My professor. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me to be part of this launch. Um, first, I need to acknowledge you know, the, the, the General Secretary of the ASCC and all the excellences, you know, colleagues, you know, sisters and brothers at the ASCC and all those who have joined you know, to be part of this launch. Uh, I want to greet you warmly you know, from the World Council of Churches in Geneva. It is a privilege and a pleasure to be with you in this moment. It is, of course, a difficult moment for the world and for Africa. The COVID-19 pandemic continues to wreak havoc on many lives and livelihoods around the globe, exposing gaping inequalities. As we launch this policy on public debt and corruption, our emphasis should not be to go back to pre-COVID-19 pandemic world, but we need systemic changes. And I want to give some examples of the, you know, specific examples where we need, you know, stem, uh, systemic changes. First, one of the issues that the policy is addressing concerns inequalities and poverty. You have mentioned changes in health, education, and social protection. As we deal with corruption in healthcare, we also need to ask questions about how to restructure and transform the healthcare and the education systems so that they benefit the majority of the African people. For example, in healthcare systems, we need to deal with the over-medicalization of health, which has disempowered communities leaving them with the little means and motivation to engage in community-based primary health care for health promotion and disease prevention. Over professionalization of health care, whereby limited resources, human, pharmaceutical, technological, provide sophisticated treatment for a few while the majority are denied basic health care, and of our commercialization of health, whereby commercial interests are driving the health agenda. And unfortunately, this is also true for Christian hospitals and clinics. Second, as we deal with corruption in our economic systems, in many African countries. We should also deal with corruption in who gets employed as unemployment is hurting our people, especially the young job seekers. We should always remember that you know, Africa is considered to be you know, a young population country. Third, as we deal with the issue of debt crisis in many African nations, I echo the point that we should also interrogate the shackles of colonial legacy and how to emancipate ourselves. Against this background, I would like to extend on behalf of the World Council of Churches, my heartfelt congratulations to the ASCC for producing a very timely and very relevant policy brief that speaks to the intersections between COVID-19, public debt, and corruption, and proposes practical engagement 
and actions by the churches. The policy brief is in line with the joint message issued by the World Council of Churches together with the sister organizations entitled Calling for an Economy of Life in a Time of Pandemic. It reads, I quote, we renew our call for international banks and financial institutions to cancel the external debts of low and middle income countries, which were at damaging levels even before the pandemic. In the restorative and liberative spirit of Jubilee, countries, especially in the global south, need empowerment in confronting the challenges posed by the COVID-19 crisis, particularly in assuring funding for building the resilience and livelihoods of people and communities, end of quote. Debt relief and indeed debt cancellation for African countries are imperative in a time of COVID. Debt cancellation could save lives. As it has been mentioned, it should be accompanied by accountability in the use of public funds. To close, this is a prophetic moment. And I quote from the same document, as churches, we can see here a path towards the new creation. This struggle could bear the fruit of the earth redemption from wanton exploitation. This is eschatological hope rooted not in the end of days, but in the fall of sinful systems. All shall be changed as we read it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51. If the truth is told, the old idolatries of empire and economy cast down and the care of the creator reflected in a creation, not exploited endlessly, but blessed deeply." End of quote. The WCC look forward to work together with the ASCC on the issues raised in the policy. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Isabel, for your kind words and very inspiring address a goodwill message that you have given us that have raised different complexities that we need to deal with as we move forward for the emergence of a new world and a new system in Africa where the common dignity and sustainable life and well-being of the people is taken seriously. Thank you very much. May I now invite Dr. Barbara King, the Second Secretary of Political Affairs at the Australian Embassy in Addis Ababa for the goodwill message on behalf of His Excellency, the Ambassador Peter Doyle. Thank you. Uh, excellencies, distinguished guests, colleagues, all protocols observed. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity uh, to be with you today. Unfortunately, the ambassador was not able to join us. However, he sends his apologies and he asks that I represent him here today. Thank you also for the opportunity to be able to share a goodwill message at this important event. 2020 has been quite a year. Everyone around the world has been touched in some way or another by the COVID-19 pandemic. Many have felt isolation, anxiety, suffering, and in some cases, loss. And unfortunately, the crisis is not over as the world continues to struggle to regain control of the virus. However, even during times like this, it is good to reflect and know that difficult times such as these do pass. In the meantime, there is still much that we can take comfort in. We know that people can find strength and hope even when things are not going well. We know that people can find gratitude for all the, all the things that do go well. 
We know that there are people who are compassionate and want to help those who need it. And we know that when people are positive, work together and are committed to a cause, good things can and do happen. Look at what you've achieved here today. Of course, it would have been wonderful for us to come together in person to support the All Africa Conference of Churches launch this important policy brief on public debt and corruption. However, during these times, that is not possible. But what is possible is for us to use virtual meetings such as this one as opportunities to engage just as meaningfully, to share information and to explore opportunities for us to work together on issues that are important to us, such as good governance. So thank you again for the invitation to join you today and to be able to participate in such a rich discussion. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Barbara. Uh, you take our kind words. Uh, greetings to His Excellency, who has delegated you to uh, bring this kind words and inspiring address as goodwill message to this virtual launch. Thank you very much. May I now invite the Executive Secretary, African Union Advisory Board on Corruption, Mrs. Charity Nchimunya, for her goodwill address. Uh, thank you so much, uh, moderator, for giving me the floor and uh, allow me to stand on existing protocols as I bring you greetings from the African Union Advisory Board on Corruption here in Arusha. And um, I want to thank you for having invited the board uh, to this uh, launch. And uh, on behalf of the board and indeed on my own behalf, I'm excited to be joining you today to witness the launch of the policy brief on uh, debt and corruption. And as you launch the policy today, allow me to salute you for the initiative and the background work that has gone into finalizing the brief. As your brief outlines, and as has already been alluded to by the statement from the General Secretary, and as we all know, corruption has such adverse effects on the well being and dignity of people. And so does debt, especially when it becomes unsustainable. Allow me to emphasize on some of the effects that have already been identified and outlined in your policy brief. Corruption and debt both present significant risks to global commitments to end uh, extreme poverty. And uh, corruption has been known to reduce economic growth. It highlights uh, poverty further. It does discourage foreign direct uh, investment. It limits uh, capital productivity, reduces state income, and uh, promotes tax evasion. And uh, in terms of the collaboration between uh, public debt and corruption, we all know that uh, public debt is both a vehicle of corruption as well as a cause of corruption following mismanagement of the economy and the inability to raise sufficient income from taxation. Corruption can also affect government debt through a number of channels. Uh, for instance, it leads to an increase in public expenditure and also changes the composition of public expenditure away from vital sectors such as health and education towards sectors which involve uh, greater secrecy and less transparency such as defense. And as you know, uh, military expenditure may not closely be monitored by tax and uh, customs authorities or be subject to the usual auditing and other legalities. And so it enhances, um, it, it promotes uh, corruption and other vices. And given all this, it is inevitable that efforts to curb corruption and unsustainable debt are scaled up. And that is why it is such a welcome in initiative that, uh, that the All Africa Conference of Churches is not shying away from being part of the solution to the debt and corruption 
scourge. The church has always spoken out for the people to ensure that social justice is a reality for all. The board therefore urges you to continue on this path of speaking out for the people, for their dignity and respect for their human rights, which is otherwise compromised in the wake of unsustainable debt and corruption. And on this note, allow me to congratulate you once more on the launch of the policy. It is my fervent hope and prayer that the launch will usher in an era of aggressive uh, implementation of the various recommendations as outlined in the, in the brief. As we all know, effective implementation of the recommendations is the only thing that will bring about the positive impact we are all looking forward to, as well as attainment of aspirations under Agenda 2063. Implementation is key, and I hope the All Africa Conference of uh, Churches, as well as her partners, will continue to be instrumental in advocating for implementation of the recommendations across the continent and at various uh, levels. And I want to urge you to continue to make a difference in the lives of the people of the, of the continent. As has been emphasized, Africa at the moment is groaning under her debt burden. Africa is bleeding from corruption and we all need to act to make a difference. The African Union Advisory Board on Corruption stands ready to work with you in this journey even as we look to the effective implementation of our own African Union Convention on Preventing and Combating Corruption. I believe that uh, with effective implementation of the various instruments that are at our disposal, including the policy brief that you are launching, that has been launched today, we can all make a difference. So once again, thank you so much and best wishes as um, you look to the implementation of the recommendations. On behalf of the African Union Advisory Board, I look forward to closer collaboration with all of you. And uh, together, we can make the much needed difference. Thank you so much. Thank you, Madam Executive Secretary, for your kind words and for the assurances of intentional cooperation and collaboration between our institutions and your institution that is very critical in this uh, quest to end uh, corruption in Africa. Thank you very much uh, again. May I now invite the presiding officer of the African Union Economic, Social and Cultural Council, AU ECOSOC, Mr. Dennis uh, Kode for his goodwill message. Thank you. Your Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, praise God, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Um, first of all, I'm very happy to be in this very important uh, forum to discuss corruption and issues that are affecting us as a continent. And I also take this opportunity to thank the organizers for extending this invitation to us as Ecosoc. Uh, through our, our head of Secretariat, uh, His Excellency William Areo, uh, whom I'm standing here on his behalf. We are happy because ECOSOC is an organ of the African Union which is mandated to coordinate the participation of CSOs, NGOs, and non-state actors in the development of Africa. And in the, in the definition of CSOs in the African, uh, in the African Union uh, ECOSOC, it includes interfaith organization, church organizations, the media, the private sector, the normal CSOs that we know, uh, the professional organizations, and all that. And therefore, this is a very important occasion for, for me on behalf of Kekoso to be here and share with you on this very important uh, topic that we are talking about corruption. For those who do not know Kekoso, in full, it's Economic, Social, and Cultural Council, which is actually dealing with the citizens of, the, uh, of, of Africa. And what do we do? We provide advice or opinion to the leadership of the African Union on uh, various policy issues that they make. And we also popularize activities like we have now the Agenda 2063 
of uh, initiatives that the leaders have made at the continental level. Our structure is extended to the country, the member states, where we have national chapters, and these national chapters coordinate various activities of uh, CSOs and other non actors in the development, and also providing policies uh, and advice to, uh, to, to member countries. And we also have uh, uh, 10 clusters which are dealing with various sectors that are touching on our economy, uh, peace and security, uh, you know, political affairs, uh, uh, um, agriculture and uh, rural economy, and so many other social and health affairs. Um, as we participate in this meeting, it's very important for us also as ECOSOC because it's a month of amnesty which was declared by the African Union uh, for promoting peace uh, in the continent, and also for encouraging our citizens to surrender illegal arms that they have. Peace is very paramount for Africa to develop, and without peace, it is very difficult even for us to sit and discuss like this. So it's a very important occasion for us that as we end the month, as we approach to ending the month, we are also having this very important uh, session to discuss issues that are affecting our development. Now, in uh, in launching this policy, um, faith has been what has been telling us, and I agree, you'll agree with me that uh, COVID-19 has brought a very serious challenge and a very serious care. But without faith, I don't think we would have managed. Even although the churches were closed, we were not able to gather the way we usually do. But I think it is that is what kept us in our houses and it's what is still keeping us. And personally, I've been engaging, uh, having fellowship with my family every evening. Uh, as we remind ourselves uh, uh, that God will provide uh, a solution to what we are having. So, I mean, faith is really very critical for us, and I think we must continue. We don't know what direction COVID is going to take, and I think it's not time to start saying that it's going because it's something we don't know. And as we keep praying, I think it's very, very important for us to keep reminding ourselves that we have a pandemic to deal with. Now, if, if I look at... Uh, the post-COVID impact is what is going to worry us a lot. And I think the church will play a very important role in cancer. We have a lot of our brothers and sisters who have lost employment, a lot of business opportunities that have been lost, and people are desperate. And I think it's very, very important that the church now comes out very strongly, provide guidance and counsel. And the brothers and sisters, it's a challenge that is going to be felt not only in Africa, but in the whole world. And I think it's important for us to find ways of encouraging our people, encouraging our brothers and sisters that this is not the end of the world. But as also we observe the protocols, it is important for us to keep them in our prayers, to keep reminding them that look, we are together in this and God will provide a solution. Now, going to the subject matter today, corruption. And I was listening to uh, deliberations from colleagues and brothers and sisters. Corruption is a pandemic worse than COVID-19 and I believe you'll agree with me. And therefore, we have to take the fight of corruption to the next level. I was talking to the South African Broadcasting Corporation TV, and I said that time has come for families for us to start rejecting corruption in our own homes. Our partners should start rejecting money that we suspect is from corruption proceeds. Our children should start rejecting you know, richness that is not accountable properly, because we cannot keep sitting, talking about corruption, trying to do what we can do, but it's not making headway. And it's very sad, very unfortunate, that corruption has gone to a level where people are actually eating money belonging to the sick. It is immoral, it is embarrassment, it is unheard of. And that tells us, as citizens of Africa, that this is the level where corruption has, has reached. And therefore, we must also advance our engagement in terms of how we fight uh, corruption. As we fight for corruption, as we wait for government to the legal systems to put in mechanisms to deal with corruption, I think as a society, socially, we also need to inwardly ask ourselves, how do you feel when you are spouse or you have a family belonging to, you know, people who are identified with corruption? I think we want our children, we want our families now to begin saying that if you cannot account for this kind of money, then we don't want it to be part of our families. And this will now encourage people to begin to think that, look, oh, this is something that we must really fight for. Corruption has destroyed institutions. The rest of corruption has destroyed our industries. Corruption has, has destroyed our culture. And I think it's high time that we really, really need to have a strategy for it. I'm glad that in this forum, 
uh, I have my sister from uh, the Anti-Corruption Advisory Board of the African Union. And many people keep asking that, what is African Union doing to fight corruption? My point here is that corruption is not just the responsibility of our leaders at the continental level. Corruption is our societal problem. We must find ways and, of dealing with it. And therefore, I really appreciate and thank the initiative that the church is taking to ensure that the church has a very big constituent. The church is where even those who are associated with corruption go to. And therefore, the church has a responsibility to change their way of thinking. The church has a responsibility of saying that, look, this is not the way to go, and the society will change. But if we keep saying that the continental level, the leadership will be able to fight corruption, this thing is too big. It's a pandemic that has really entrenched in our society, and therefore we must find ways of dealing with it. When we have people who are billionaires, and it's not only quite a number of African countries are experiencing this, but you find that we had situations in Kenya where people even stole money belonging to the cemeteries. It's unheard of, it's moral, it's, it's unethical. And therefore, there must, we must reach a point where we say this thing must stop and must stop at all costs. Now, as I conclude, uh, EcoSoft wishes you well uh, in this discussion. Uh, we look forward to engaging further with the church, with the interface, to ensure that we have messages which get to the ground. Because EcoSoft is the umbrella which deals with the, with the civil society. And the civil society, in the definition that I've just given, it is the voice where the people can come up and say what we want. The people can bring up ideas that the, the leadership at the continental level or at the county level will be able to adapt as, as, as a policy and as a way forward. So I think it's very important that you have recognized us and you have, uh, you know, involved us in this discussion. So we look forward to engaging further. We look forward to supporting any initiative. And please let, let this be a continuation. Let be, this be the beginning of engagement uh, to provide people with opportunities to discuss, to share, and to voice out to ventilate issues that, uh, that are affecting us and uh, that we need to work on to change our society. So again, I thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to make my few remarks and also to participate in this very, very important discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brother Dennis. You are welcome to our office uh, at Weyaki Road for further uh, engagement. Thank you for your inspiring uh, message to, to all of us. Uh, may I now invite Her Excellency, the Ambassador of Malawi to Kenya, Her Excellency Mrs. Agrena Musa for her goodwill message. Your Excellency, your time is now. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you uh, moderator. Uh, this General Secretary, uh, eminences, distinguished, Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure today to join you, Reverend Fidon Mwembeki, General Secretary of All Africa Conference of Churches, AACC, on this auspicious occasion during the launch of the AACC Policy Brief on Debt and Corruption in Africa. I would like to very much warmly congratulate the AACC on this momentous uh, event. Allow me to state from the outset that our newly elect elected uh, president, His Excellency Dr. Lazarus Makata Chakwera, has a special relationship with the AACC. I take this opportunity to thank AACC leadership for the warm message of congratulations, which I was very honored to deliver to His Excellency the President. I would like to most sincerely thank AACC for extending an invitation to me personally and the government and people of Malawi to participate during this important event. Let me state unequivocally that the launch of this policy brief is a clear manifestation of the importance that AACC attaches to matters of debt and corruption. It reinforces the notion that the church needs to have a holistic approach towards humankind, one that covers the spiritual, physical, mental, social, and even political I dare say. 
It is encouraging to note that AACC, through the policy brief, intends to embark on specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-specific activities which involve members of the church, the general public, government structures, information, and data. Being a representative of the Malawi government in Kenya, I know only too well the critical role that the attitudes, behaviors, and actions of public servants play in ensuring, in ensuring social stability, livelihoods, and prosperity. In any case, the administration of His Excellency uh, President Lazarus Shakwera immensely values the role of the church in national building. Let me make special mention of the policy recommendation made by the AACC to mitigate the ills of corruption. AACC describes corruption, and I quote, corruption is the use of a public office or position of authority for private material or social gain at the expense of other people, end of quote. In other words, corruption is sin. President Chakwera, since taking oath of office, has not tired in talking about the sin of corruption, which the president has also referred to as one of the eight rebels that need to be cleared as a matter of agency. In his statement, he intends to achieve this through commitment to make the country's anti-corruption bureau, uh, which we call ACB, fully independent and resourced to investigate and prosecute financial crimes and also supporting the judiciary to fast track the disposal of corruption cases. Before I conclude uh, and to quote President Chakura's sentiments, I, I quote that he also stated that it is no secret that we have had one administration after another shifting its post to the, to the next election, promising good governance, but delivering corruption. Before we can begin to rebuild, we must clear the rubble of corruption, for it has left our taxes in ruins, end of court. There can never be more strong clarion call than to end my remarks on. I want to wish AACC all the best as they set out to implement the policy brief which they have launched today. May the guiding power of Almighty God be with your endeavors. I thank you for your kind attention and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you most sincerely, Your Excellency, for such a kind word and inspiring message. Uh, please convey our appreciation to His Excellency, President Lazarus. We hold him there to heart and we are praying for him, the government and the people of Malawi. And just to assure you, your, your embassy is not very far from our office. So you are welcome at any time for coffee. Uh, at, our, at our place. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for such a powerful message that you have assured us that the government is committed to that. Thank you. Your Eminences, Your Excellencies, Your Lordships, we may not be able to continue with all the goodwill messages that we have planned to do because of time. Time is no longer on our side. But we will open a space for the next five to ten minutes Please, if you do have a comment or a remark, you can indicate at the bottom, if you click on the participants, you will find an icon indicating raise hand. Now, you click on that, then I will be able to look at those who have raised their hands to make a minute, a 30 seconds or one minute comment as we draw close uh, to the end of this uh, virtual 
uh, meeting. But just to acknowledge that a lot of comments and remarks have been written on the chat box. I mean, very powerful, immense, provoking, uh, thought-provoking statements that have been written there, challenging each, each one of us to be advocates of sustainable debts and anti-corruption in Africa. So uh, please, if you do have a comment, a remarks to make for the next, uh, maybe for 30 seconds to one minute, uh, I would be delighted to give you the chance. I have already seen a hand from Major Meshak, Moshamba. You have the next one minute to make your comment. Major Meshak, Moshamba. Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. My question is, why is it that most leaders are always on defensive when people need clarity on such issues like corruption and other things? Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much for your question, but I still think that you can offer an answer to that. Why do you think so? In the next 30 seconds, can you offer a response to that? Yeah, my, I think when they are defensive, they, 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 they think that things are normal, whereas the people is, are seeing the reality. So to, to, I think our leaders, they are not seeing what other people are seeing. They, are, they will be parallel with each, with each other. Thank you so much. Thank you, Major. Not all our leaders, maybe it will be helpful to say some of our leaders. Thank and you. to say that, yes, so thank you very much. Uh, I see a hand, uh, is it E-M-U, e E-M-U, I don't know the name, but you please introduce yourself very well. And you have the next 30 seconds. Thank you very much, Brother Lesmore. This is oh. Edirishi Mungure from <laughs> Lutheran World Federation. I just want to uh, register uh, the Lutheran World Federation appreciation to the AACC and its leadership for the invitation to join into this platform. And uh, uh, it's important to be reminded that the church is a church that takes uh, its role in the public space. So thank you very much. And the LWF continues to be committed to joining the AACC and other ecumenical friends and the, all the sisters and brothers uh, here in this platform um, as we engage in this journey. Thank you. Uh, Paul Esana, uh, Sister Elishi, uh, the abbreviation, it couldn't click on my <laughs> mind, but thank you very much for your kind words. Very yes. uh, I see Margaret, Margaret, your hands is up. You have the next 30 seconds or one minute to make a comment. Margaret, can you unmute yourself, Margaret? Uh, Margaret, can you unmute yourself because your microphone is muted? Hello. Hi. Yes, is that Margaret? Yes, it is. Yes, please, Margaret, you have the next 30 seconds, so uh, one minute uh, at most uh, for your comment. Uh, can you unmute yourself, Margaret? We cannot hear you. Uh, your microphone is muted, Margaret. Can you unmute it so that we can hear you? Hello, I hope you can hear me. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yes, Hello. yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. You have the next 30 seconds. Thank you very much. I just want to say uh, how much uh, I appreciate this effort in bringing everyone of us together so that we can come up with possible options of Help 
Unfortunately, we can't hear you clearly, Margaret. I am sorry about that. Uh, uh, we can't hear you clearly. Uh, may I, may I, may I? We can't hear you, Margaret. Sorry. Your network is not so good. Sorry about that. Believe that in our own small. All right. Can you hear me? Okay. Can yeah. you can... hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you now round up, please? All right. Yeah. Uh, sorry, the network is unstable. Um, may I invite uh, uh, Dr. Bumi? You have the one next one minute for your remarks. Dr. Bumi from the Methodist Church, Great Britain. Your microphone is muted. Uh, sorry, sorry, Margaret. Sorry, Margaret. Yeah, the network is bad. Yes. Yes, the network is bad. We can't hear you at all. It's hazy uh, on your end. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, Dr. Bumi. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for the opportunity to. Um, grace this wonderful occasion. It's been a very timely um, contrib um, let's say organization of the topic. I bring you greetings from Great Britain. It's um, a bit cold here, well, wet here. But, um, it's, it's also an opportunity to hear such a good, um, let's say, remark or different remarks on corruption, which is very timely, especially now that we are dealing with extreme poverty in Africa caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. And I pray that the impact of the church leaders and the church would be on how to put in effective systems um, in terms of policy and also to help in terms of accountability. Because uh, this, I believe, is the first stage in which we are, going, we are identifying corruption and the next phase will be how do we effect it at different levels so that Africa can benefit and the world might also benefit from that. Thank you very much for your, uh, for this wonderful, um, well, I say, um, organization and plan. And I pray that um, as partners, we're very proud of AACC. I will continue to cheer you on for doing great things in Jesus' name. Thank you. God Thank you very much, Dr. Bumi. May I now invite uh, Wendy Kishuru from the United Church in Canada. You have the next one minute. Good morning. Good morning. Thank morning. you. Yes. My deepest gratitude to the ACC for the invitation. Greetings to all uh, members of the ACC, the General Secretary, all guests and partners. Um, this has been a profoundly uh, important issue to raise not just at this time, but in the context of uh, the increasing and rampant um, acceleration, I think, of deepening debt as uh, countries seek to meet the needs of people affected by COVID-19. I hope and pray that the recommendations can be prioritized in a way that helps us build on each of our capacities to move the work forward um, my hope and prayer is that as we engage this work together, we will not find ourselves um, discouraged, disheartened by what is sure to be uh, resistance to change. Um, so I think if we can find it within ourselves to continue to mobilize those most affected, um, to continue to hold us as church accountable, as well as our leaders, my hope and prayer is that we can actually um, begin to implement these recommendations by the AACC. Greetings from the United Church of Canada and thank you. Thank you, thank you, Wendy, for your kind words. May I invite Reverend Nikta Lubale? You have the next one minute. Reverend Nikta Lubale is the General Secretary of the Organization of African Instituted Churches. Reverend Nikta Lubale. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, we are deeply grateful to the ASCC for pulling us together as the church on this continent and beyond uh, to engage the reality of the escalating debt and, uh, and corruption 
both are terrible, heavy burdens on the lives of the poor because if public resources are stolen, they are stolen away from public services. If debt increases, the very people from whom public services are stolen again are taxed to pay that. So the church has come prophetically, and thank you, um, uh, my colleague, Dr. Mwambeki, for leading us this direction. We are part of it, uh, and we are going to tackle it, and we are going to work together, because there will be a day when African children will celebrate their lives. Who are the majority of us? But that day will not simply come. We have to make it, and that is part of the process. We are deeply grateful for this. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Nikta, uh, for your kind words and for the assurance of the journey together, because this is a struggle that is not left for one institution or individual, but is a collective uh, endeavor. Thank you. Thank you most sincerely. Uh, we will now take the this second to the last part of our event uh, program, which is Way Forward. I will, I will, I will, I will invite uh, my colleague, Gordon Simango, to give us a summary of the way forward as we come to the close of this virtual event. Thank you so uh, much. Gordon, yes. Thank you so much, Reverend uh, Dr. Les More. Your Excellencies, our distinguished guests, my Lord Bishops, the ACC leadership and our membership, we have had and we are full of deep appreciation and highly honored to have received these important messages. Thank you for your best wishes, for your prayers and for your commitment to walk this path together with ACC. Thank you for uh, the congratulatory messages. And thank you for, I mean, thank you to uh, my GS for giving me this opportunity to wrap up like this. I would just make a short summary and then look at the way forward. So Dr. Bumi, Wendy, Salvation Army, Dr. Eliash, Reverend Nikta, uh, thank you so, so much for those words of encourage, encouragement and congratulations. Um, as you say, we are part of it together. We deeply appreciate and as we prioritize our response, we would be uh, journeying with you together um, in, in this work. Um, I would like to note what the, uh, Her Excellency Mrs. Agrina said in terms of her saying, corruption is a sin, it is evil. And we need to talk of the scene of corruption. And as we rebuild, we need to realize that one of the eight hips of the rebels is corruption. We are in dissolution. We need to build up with integrate, integrity. Thank you so, so much. Um, Your Excellency, Mr. Dennis Kode. Very, very important in terms of what you were saying that for us to tackle corruption, it begins with us and it begins right in our homes. It begins with us putting the right values. And rightly, like you said, we need three degrees leadership, not only leadership from the front or from the top, but leadership from where we stand. And all of us must provide this leadership. And thank you so, so, so much. And, and, and also your encouragement to say that Africa is rich in faith. I mean, when you travel across Africa, you see Africans praying everywhere, even under trees. And you're mentioning that the church has given so much hope during this time of COVID. We really deeply, deeply appreciate and you're opening up the possibility for continuing engagement with AU ECOSOC. Thank you so, so much, Mrs. Charit Chimunya for uh, your words of um, encouragement as well the hope and the prayer uh, to, uh, to implement and work together um, with your institution. But I think you, you pointed out very, very important point there when you said corruption hampers the, cap the, the, the possibilities and the capabilities of member states to implement their commitments across the board, whether they be AU commitments 
you mentioned the Agenda 2063, uh, commitments to implementation and achievement of SDGs. If countries are corrupt, the possibility to achieve these commitments would be very, very difficult. And thank you very, very much, Dr. Uh, Barbara King, the, that this opportunity of coming together to discuss important issues that matter to citizens of Africa, to discuss issues of justice, it's very, very important. COVID-19, as you said, has touched almost every corner of our lives. People have lost their loved ones, anxiety, suffering, and all sorts of things have happened to us. Thank you so, so, so much. And thank you, uh, Professor um, Isabel Apao Piri. I think your, your mentioning of the need to accelerate commitments as they relate to health were very, very important. I just reflected on the Abuja Declaration, which committed 15% of the member states budget to health, of which there hasn't been much progress in that area. And like you saying that we need also to inter interrogate shackles of colonial legacy. It's very, very important. And you're mentioning that debt relief, debt cancellation could save lives, especially during this time of COVID. Thank you very much, Imke. We really, really appreciate you um, taking us and reminding us of the Cotonou Agreement and the new partnership agreement that would be signed between Africa and the EU and the possibility that this opportunity and this engagement creates for us to engage with both EU and the African Union in terms of ensuring that corruption is corruption and the whole issue of the new debt crisis is high on the agenda. That's very, very, very important. And we really want to thank you also, Reverend Marco, there for a deep accompaniment in the relationship that we have had with your institution over the years. And you're mentioning that corruption denies God's people abandoned life and you vehemently denying that Af corruption is not African, it is a global weakness. Um, and also we would like to thank you, Karimi, there on the need of um, the need for reforming the global financial architecture. And, and you mentioning that Africa cannot do this alone. I was captivated by you actually quoting Matthew 16 verse 18. They're really talking that the true church of Jesus Christ revitalizes this mandate and tackles, I mean, uh, the prevalence of hell, of the gates of hell in the lives of people. And so, I mean, for us, that's a very, very important motivation that this is the right moment and we would like to uh, thank you that our, uh, my GS, it was very, very important as I was listening to you, I mean, in terms of um, the need for us to collaborate, to work uh, together, even uh, with the institutions that are represented here today, but also, um, also mentioning the fact that when we were campaigning for debt cancellation during the Jubilee 2000 movement, we had not paid much attention to corruption and unsustainable debt levels because we did not realize that we were going to find ourselves here again. And here we are. And thank you so, so much for uh, that powerful message. Um, I would like to congratulate and to thank our members who are working in the front lines round the clock on issues of economic justice, that monitoring national budget expenditures, members who are speaking to corruption, even in difficult situations. And we would like to thank you uh, so, so much for, for that. AACC remains committed and continues on this journey. And I think we have found each other. We'll continue to find each other. We would be knocking on your doors. Reverend Esmore invited you to our offices as well, but also to continue interacting with us and we hope that this is the beginning of uh, good times of uh, interaction and working together. Not necessarily that we would agree on everything, even agreeing to disagree. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency Gordon, uh, for, for such a recap that you have, uh, you have given us.
Uh, without waste of time, we have expressed our gratitude to all of you, your excellencies, your eminences, your lordships, sisters and brothers for being part of this event. May I now invite our Vice President of the All Africa Conference of Churches in the person of Reverend Nicole Aman, who would give us the closing prayer. Reverend Nicole, you are most welcome. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. Thank you for all these words of encouragement. Thank you for uh, this launching and uh, for the work of the ACC. Thank you, O oh God, for leading us in this um, launching. And we pray that really we can work together for to 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 work against corruption because everywhere we find corruption and we know that corruption is not something that we find in your kingdom really father we want corruption to stop we want everyone to live peacefully and live really have a good life in this world and we want everyone to get his or her own share in this community in this world father we want to thank you for all those who have been participating in this uh, meeting and for all those who have prepared this meeting for us who have really um, helped us to reflect more on uh, this subject this topic really further we it, this is something that we really uh, find, uh, deep in our heart it's it concerns us everywhere we thank you for this uh, moment and we pray that we continue to fight against corruption wherever we are and whoever we are we can all fight for corruption. Thank you, oh God. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. May we continue to be advocates of unsustainable debts and anti-corruption in Africa. May justice and peace reign in Africa. Uh, we do not have coffee for you, but you can enjoy your coffee wherever you are. Thank you and God bless us. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you too. Sorry for coming late. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.